So the, the region of Nagorno-Karabakh, after the end of the 2020 war, there was a peace deal between Armenia and Azerbaijan that was brokered by Moscow. So ever since there are about 2000 Russian peacekeeping troops, uh, so you have checkpoints, you know, the access to the region got very complicated and it's all controlled by Russian forces, those, che those checkpoints. Um, but however, even though there was a peace deal and, you know, in the minds of a lot of people, the conflict was just over, there have been many, many clashes and, and a lot of tensions still in Nagorno-Karabakh, but also on the border between Armenia and Azerbaijan. So for local people, it was really not over and the latest developments, you know, were just the continuation of the war. It didn't really come as a surprise for locals. In September 2022 is when there were attacks on the territory of Armenia proper. And that was the first time it happened. It was very shocking for a few people. But at that time, the region of Nagorno-Karabakh was still kind of calm and nothing was happening. Except that sometimes for a few days, the Lachin Corridor, which after the 2020 war became the only road, really the only one connecting Nagorno-Karabakh to Armenia, was being sometimes closed, but just for a few hours. So it was the usual and, you know, people were not really worried about it. It was like, OK, it's closed, it will open, whatever. Is it because troops are moving or maybe the Russians need to do something, whatever. But then what happened is that in December uh, 2022, on the 12th of December, the road was closed and it didn't open. It didn't reopen. Uh, now it's still not open. So the blockade of Artsakh, or as it's known internationally, Nagorno-Karabakh, started on the 12th of December. Uh, by Azerbaijan and I was at school at that time and actually we didn't really pay attention to that and nobody took it seriously because we thought that it's just a joke by Azerbaijan and they just want to frighten us because that's a very huge human rights violation and we really didn't expect that Azerbaijan will make this move but they did because I work with children I have two conditions of dealing with blockade. First one is in the village and the second one is in the city. When I'm in the village and with children, the problems are far more severe. So uh, we had a very uh, tough winter with our children and our children were deprived of the basic right of uh, education because of the Azerbaijani um, people um, cut the gas supply. We couldn't hit the schools all winter children had to go to school in their winter coats and we reduced the class hours from 45 minutes to 25 minutes so just they didn't freeze in the school and they also didn't have food and snacks to bring to school if the blockade finishes we will have to pass through them and show our passports and ids to Azerbaijani people they can have uh, data about us, about where we live, about our names, occupation. They will they will be able to take us out to interrogate, take us to the prison or anything. They can just close that road and start an ethnic cleansing of us. And nobody will be able to help because they have this huge checkpoint with a lot of weapons and a lot of um, members of army of Azerbaijan. And this is a huge, huge deal and everybody is very afraid of what's next. Yes, Garabachi. Utasuntaria, yes, Garabari, Horivara, Aprumim, Tununim, Tegunim. He may as Borter Ganama Premur Chanaparnel Pakwaza. Chanaparchka were has name in Tunim Yerehan and the Vets Vets Tun. And at the beginning, there were some protests by so-called Azerbaijani eco-activists. They presented themselves as eco-activists. And the official position of Azerbaijan was that it was just, you know, people, civilians who decided to go and do those protests and that it had nothing to do with the government. Uh, but the problem is that when that happened, the access, the Latin corridor was just closed de facto because people couldn't go to uh, Nagorno-Karabakh from Armenia or outside of Nagorno-Karabakh to Armenia. So for the first weeks, it was really worrying for a lot of people because there was no crossing at all. Uh, then that changed a little and the situation got a little better because at least the ICRC, so the International uh, Committee of the Red Cross, 
and the Russian peacekeepers could go back and forth. So it was still a blockade situation as normal people couldn't go back and forth. But if you were sick, you could be taken to the hospital. Uh, there was, you know, families being reunited thanks to the ICRC. Food was delivered as well as some drugs. So, you know, people got a bit reassured that at least there is that movement going on, even though, you know, it was still very stressful for people that you cannot go. Um, the internet is bad, you know, electricity cuts happen more and more. There was no gas and it's quite cold in the region in the winter. So there was still that humanitarian worry, you know, of a bigger humanitarian crisis happening. Now the Hakari Bridge, so which was a bridge, it's on the border between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Uh, well, there's now an Azerbaijani checkpoint there, so that's new. That was not supposed to happen. Uh, when you look at the the peace deal that was signed in 2020, nothing like that was you know supposed to happen. The whole corridor is supposed to be only Russian peacekeepers, and people should have the right to go back and forth. So with that new checkpoint, the road is even more closed, and there's a new worry because there are also a few villages that are kind of in between that checkpoint and then the point to which the world was closed before. So those people really have no communication with the outside world, nothing. And the situation is really, you know, their tension is growing because actually the International Court of Justice in February ordered Azerbaijan to lift the blockade. There have been a lot of international uh, condemnation of this more than usually with even the US and Europe saying that, you know, the road should be opened for humanitarian concerns. But it seems like with this new checkpoint, it's not getting any better. It's actually getting worse.